Hello everybody and welcome back to Chris Bosch Props. Today I wanted to do a video sharing with you guys my slicer settings that I used for my 3D printed Robocop suit. Now some of you might be asking, Chris, what is a slicer? Well, a slicer is software that is used that you import a 3D model that you made, that you've purchased, that you found for free on Thingiverse or whatever. You bring that model into your software and that software then slices that model up into thousands, hundreds of layers so that your 3D printer can then recognize that code and build that 3D model layer by layer by layer. Well, recently on one of my videos, I got a question asking me, hey, Chris, what are your slicer settings? And I realized for as long as I've been doing this, I've never shared with you guys my slicer settings. Now, there, there's nothing secretive about it. There's nothing fancy about my, my slicer settings. Most of the settings I use are actually default. But anyway, I thought I would still just share with you guys exactly the settings that I use and the software I use. Now, the software I use is extinct to some people because most people use free software like Cura and Prusa Slicer. But I started back in 2016 and when I started I wanted my 3D printing journey to be as easy as possible for me and back then there was a lot of problematic software. So the software that I do use is Simplify 3D but that's okay. The settings pretty much are the same across the board. So let's get into it and let me share it with you and explain exactly what I do. Okay guys, so here we are in Simplify 3D. This is my 3D slicer of choice and has been for uh, several years. Uh, I do dabble with Cura and Prusa Slicer. I have used both of those softwares. I just find them sometimes to be a bit more problematic and I always find myself coming back to Simplify 3D. Now Simplify 3D doesn't have all the bells and whistles that uh, Cura has and Prusa Slicer. But guys, it just works. <laughs> it just works. It gives me little to no problems with any of my 3D models that I want to print. Now, I'm not trying to sell anybody Simplify 3D because it is not free. It costs around $150. But guys, since 2016, I've printed countless numbers of things, including three Robocop suits with Simplify 3D, and it just works for me, guys. But Anyway, the slicer settings that I use are pretty much going to be the same across the board even if you use Cura or Prusa Slicer. So I'll highlight the most important settings that will also be found in those slicers that are probably the most important when it comes to printing each piece that you're doing. So anyways, here is the workspace for Simplify 3D. We'll import a model. I'm just going to import uh, the helmet which is not level with the bed. Now a little cool feature that Simplify 3D has is you can place the surface on a bed and whatever face that you click, it will put it flat or level with the bed. But anyway, that's not important. Let's get into the settings. Now the printer that I use to print uh, my last two Robocop suits is pretty much a dinosaur. Uh, today and that was the Creality CR10 and I actually use the original CR10 not even the CR10S the original CR10 that first came out that Uncle Jesse promoted and a 3D printing nerd and a bunch of other guys but the, C the Creality CR10 is an amazing printer I still use it to this day for some things even though I have some more modern printers the nozzle that I use is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle nothing fancy there these are all default settings all the retraction settings are all default uh, I will leave that there for you uh, you can also use on your printer a 0.6 millimeter nozzle even a 0.8 millimeter nozzle uh, but I would recommend if you were to use another nozzle to use a 0.6 because that will allow you to print your models a lot faster the downside to that is if you use a bigger nozzle, you're going to use more filament. So you're going to go through your filament faster, but you're going to reduce your print times almost in half with a 0.6 millimeter. But for my Robocop suits, all three that I've done in the past, 
I've used a 0.4 millimeter nozzle with longer print times, even when you cut the model up into multiple pieces. So yep, that's all my default settings there. So here we are in the layer tab. Now for my layer height, I just use a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Um, you can bump this up, you can bump it down. Uh, the less millimeter layer height that you do, the smoother your model's gonna look. The higher you go, the more print lines you're gonna see, but you're gonna get faster printer times. The lower you go, the slower printer times. But either way you do it, guys, even if you were to do 0.1 millimeter layer height, you still have a lot of body work to do. So I just kind of keep it neutral right at 0.2 millimeters. My top solid layers are three. My bottom solid layers are three. And that's all just default. Uh, the outline perimeter shells is two. That's also default. That's what I use on all of my Robocop suits was two perimeter shells. Uh, but in hindsight, I probably would have bumped this up to three if I were to do it all over again. And the three um, perimeter shells would just make the model a lot stronger. Um, sometimes if you guys have noticed, if you've left one of your prints out in the sun, you'll get that honeycomb, the, the infill will kind of show through. That's because your perimeter shells are probably two and sometimes even less than that. Some people do one. If you're to do three perimeter shells, it will make your model a lot stronger and help it be more resistant to heat depending on how much infill you do the, the more hollow the model is inside of it the the more it's going to be sensitive to heat but anyway three perimeter shells in hindsight i would do it all over again with three now this is just default uh this default for using a, sh a skirt and brim um, it's not the same type of brim that is used on, on Cura. It's just kind of an outline that helps kind of just clean the nozzle and then it starts the model. Uh, I just left that default. The infill that I use is just all default from Simplify 3D. I use 20% infill. Um, on some things I do 25. That's really just up to you guys. But on all my stuff I use 20 to 25. Um, when you do supports, you can do auto supports or you can add in supports manually. Uh, Cura, Prusa Slicer also have these same options. That's just something you guys will have to dabble with. For the temperatures that I use for my bed, I use 60 degrees Celsius. For the primary extruder, I use 215 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's what I use across the board for all the filament that I use. Uh, my primary filament of choice is Sun Lu PLA Plus. I love this stuff. It's cheap and it just works good. It works on all of my printers with no problems. So yeah guys, that's my temperature. 215, heated bed, 60. Now all this is default. I, I don't mess with any of this stuff. Fan speed or anything, don't do it. Don't mess with this. This is all default. Don't mess with scripts. Now my speeds, my default printing speed that I use on all my printers. Now I don't have a bamboo. Uh, most of mine are bed slingers and I use 50 millimeters a second. That's just a good neutral printing speed and it just helps get everything just right and get it off the bed for me to use it. So. Uh, X, Y axis movement, 80 millimeters a second. Z axis movement, 16.7 millimeters a second. I could probably print at 60 if I wanted to, um, but that creates a little bit more layer lines for me just because the nozzle is moving a little faster, but you could bump it up to 55, 60 if you're just using a basic bed slinger. If you're using a bamboo or uh, the K1 Max, those print way faster <laughs> than just your standard uh, bed slingers. So. That's my print speeds. That's what I used on all of my Robocop suits. Uh, there are some varying things where I raised it a little bit and I lessened it a little bit on certain prints, but this is my neutral default printing speed is 50 guys. So, and that's pretty much it. That's, I don't mess with this and I don't mess with any of the advanced stuff. Those are my basic settings that I use. And as you've seen guys in my videos, it's worked and it will give you the prints that you need, but you will have to put the work into it to get those models smoothed out and looking pretty.
So once all that is dialed in, we have the model here. Simplify 3D has a little support thing and you could generate automatic supports depending on the degree that you choose. On degrees for uh, overhang for supports, I usually do about 60 to 65, depending. Some printers do better than others, and I just generate automatic supports. Now on the Robocop helmet, I manually go through and remove all of this. It kind of sucks with Simplify 3D because you have to remove all of it manually. It's just, yeah, I know. It, it takes a minute, but I remove all of those manually. I don't use any supports for the middle of the dome, but I do leave all the supports for the visor and for the back of the helmet. Okay, so once we have all our supports in our model, we will prepare our print and give it just a second. Simplify 3D is actually pretty fast in uh, producing the G-code for your model. I've noticed it's a lot faster than Prusa and Cura. Okay, so there we go. It provided our G code and it's giving an estimate of 99 hours. Uh, that is primarily because of all the support material that's in the middle, but I told you guys I usually manually remove all the support material in the middle. I don't use it and that reduces it, I think, to about 70 hours or so which is a couple days, a few days. Um, yeah, and that's all I do. And after that, you just save it to your SD card. We'll say RoboCop helmet. We save it. It'll take a second here. Okay, so Simplify 3 exported our file to our SD card and all we gotta do You'll pull your SD card out. You'll take your micro SD card and put it into your 3D printer. And good to go. And hopefully you'll have something like this, guys. So yeah, those are the settings that I used to have my dream RoboCop suit that is standing here in my garage, guys. And I hoped this video really helped you guys out and is a good starting point for you to also accomplish your dream of being able to own a RoboCop suit or any other kind of suit. So yeah guys, thank you for watching and we are on to the next one.